We spent a week on the world's largest cruise ship with our toddler, and we learned a few things. So I thought we'd put together this quick little info guide to help you if you're considering taking a cruise with your little one. Now, the first thing we made sure to do was to choose the right cruise. What I mean by this is you don't have to plan your entire cruise around your toddler, but obviously taking into account their specific needs will make your whole trip far more enjoyable. So we made sure that the cruise that we were going on had kid-friendly activities and entertainment options available to us. Now, we just so happened to choose Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas, which is also the largest cruise ship in the world. You don't have to go that big. And it was a really good one for kids. I did already do a full ship tour all about all the various activities there are on the world's largest cruise ship. You can go watch it right here. Now there were a few specific areas on our ship that really catered to younger kids, which had a bunch of padded areas, climbing things, you know, those little boards on the wall that you can kind of interact with and two different water parks. One was an older one and one was a younger one, which was really good because we could take our toddler who was not potty trained into that area and it just wasn't as chaotic. You know how water parks are, they can be a little bit intimidating, especially for younger toddlers. So I'm happy it had that option. There's also an indoor playground that had a lot of little activities. So say if the weather wasn't great, you could go there or if it was just too hot, same, same. We ended up here a couple times. Elliot really enjoyed spending time in the playground. There was a whole section called the boardwalk that had this Coney Island vibe and it had a carousel which we rode multiple times with Elliot. Plus they had carnival games and other little games for kids to do. There's also a kids theater that had a black light uh, puppet show that was on and it was specifically catered to young kids. There was like bubbles and, and that's kind of what I meant, but I'm glad that we had a ship that had those sort of activities. Another thing that our specific ship had was childcare and babysitting services. This is huge if you have young kids, six to 36 months, you could do paid childcare services and they'd put them down for a nap, you know, like proper daycare. And then there was a bunch of just like daytime kid services so you could drop off your older kids too. Now you may or may not want to put your kids into childcare while you were on your cruise, but at least you have the option to do so if you know you just, one a few hours to do something else, like one of the many other <laughs> dozens of other activities that there are geared more towards the adults or say even your older kids. Let's talk strollers. So we used a stroller for embarkation and disembarkation. So it's getting on and off the ship. It was just the easiest way to get through the security check-in onto the ship, etc. When we were on the ship, however, we ended up using the stroller maybe once. It was just easier to let Elliot walk and to carry him. At least that's what we found. A couple reasons for this. One is if we had a stroller, we had to wait for the elevators and the elevators on our ship had a wait. <laughs> we also found that we just didn't need the stroller. It became kind of like a nuisance and it really was safe enough for him to walk anywhere. I mean, the ships do rock a little bit and he definitely fell over a few times. <laughs> But you know, nothing too bad. Now the only caveat I would say is if you had a younger toddler that wasn't as good as walking or just kind of starting to walk, then I would probably just bring the stroller with you, but bring a smaller stroller. I mean, this is true for any stroller that you bring. You don't need the big bulky strollers, something that's compact that you can collapse and store in your very small stateroom. Now dining with a toddler, Ooh a fun experience. <laughs> Pretty much every restaurant will have kid food options. You know, the typical mac and cheese, spaghetti, pizza, chicken nuggets, French fries. There's just so much food on board that like, it really isn't hard to find something they like. I wouldn't really stress about it. Now in general, I would say learn where the buffet is. Love the buffet. The buffet is life. I'm pretty sure we ate almost every breakfast and lunch at the buffet and we even had a few dinners at the buffet because it's the easiest thing to, you know, pick out something you think they'll like. If they don't like it, you can just go grab something else. You could find a seat, you can get them seated, you can get them eating as soon as possible. You don't have to wait for table service. Now we did do several of the evening dinings. Honestly, I would say stick with the earlier dining times regardless because the days are long, you're doing so many activities, it's just easier to get the earlier dining times and not have to worry about like a cranky, 
hungry kid if you are gonna be doing the like main dining room options. Now we did opt to do one specialty restaurant, which is like an additional paid restaurant that we did. And it was, it was a two hour long dinner and bless our little toddler's heart. It was a day he skipped his nap, he wasn't hungry and he sat through all two hours of our elaborate extravagant dinner. I would stay clear of that and just stick to kind of your buffets and your main dining. Anything that you kind of already paid for, unless you wanna take advantage of those, as I previously mentioned, childcare services and put them in childcare while you enjoy your dinner. Maybe I would do that next time and do a later dinner. See, it's also handy to know kind of where your quick, easy to grab uh, options are. So there was like cafes that we could grab sandwiches in. There was like a pizza shop that had like 24 hour pizza that Elliot <laughs> took advantage of. Now let's talk sleeping, naps, and downtime. I'm not sure if this is true in all cruises, but apparently you can't use baby monitors. You can't bring them on or they just don't work. I don't know. It basically means that you have to stay with your little one while they're napping. And basically once they go to bed at night. And one of us would stay in the room, the other would go out and do some filming or just kind of explore the ship. Now in the evenings, this is where I would go see all my shows. I went to see three different shows in the evenings and it worked really, really good. Matt would stay with Elliot while he was sleeping and I would go see a show by myself. I just rocked right up. I didn't even have to worry about tickets. There's always pretty much room for a single person and it was a great way to take in the evening entertainment. And then on Matt's night off, he would go to like one of the sports bars, have a drink, watch some of the games that we're playing. Now, most likely you don't have internet access or you have to pay an arm and leg to get it. So podcasts and books worked really, really well. Now on excursion days, it becomes a little trickier because uh, you're probably going to be off of the ship during their nap time. Maybe if your little one's like ours and can fall asleep on the stroller, we brought our stroller and we did that one of the days. Another day he fell asleep on the car ride back from the beach, which I mean, whatever <laughs> at that point, I don't know. If your little one isn't like that and needs to have a crib and sleep in the crib in like the dark, whatever environment, then you just kind of have to plan your excursion days to be back at the ship for their nap time, which you can do it. You just go earlier. Like you're usually at port in the morning at like seven or eight. So like just be ready to go and leave early in the morning, which leads me to cabin choice. I'd highly recommend upgrading your room if you have a young child or a baby on a cruise because you are gonna be spending a lot more time in that room for the naps, for sleeping, for getting ready, for downtime, etc. Having a balcony was such a nice touch, was so great for us during nap time because one of we could just go out on the balcony and enjoy the ocean and you didn't feel like you were just like stuck inside during nap time. So that worked really, really well. It doesn't have to be ocean view, just any balcony, like you can get an interior balcony. You don't have to worry about pack and plays or cribs. The ships will have them. Just put in a request before you get on or literally as you are embarking. <laughs> just put in a request then. The other thing I would say to be aware of is to choose your floor carefully. Now we were on the lowest floor, which just so happened to be the same floor that there were food places, there was the boardwalk area, there was the promenade. So like we didn't have to take any stairs or elevators. We could just walk like two minutes, not even, and we would be at activities, at food. It was really easy to do if one of us needed to run out and grab something like a food item for our toddler or like the top floor. Sometimes that's where like the pool area is or the buffet, just it, depending on your ship, whatever ship you're going on, just look at the ship map when you are selecting your room and yeah, choose one of those floors that are closer to amenities. So now that we're about halfway through, if you are enjoying this video, I would love for you to give it a thumbs up as well as hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more tips and advice videos from me. And if you are looking for more just general travel advice, I have a 259 page ebook all about travel, my best tips, advice, hacks, links, etc. I'm gonna leave links down below and you can go check that out. Ports of call and excursions. I would definitely say less is 
perfect. <laughs> Less is perfect when it comes to choosing excursions and things to do. We chose one activity each day and that was pretty much just beaches. We didn't want to like jam pack our day with a toddler. We wanted it to be relaxing. We didn't want it to be too stressful. You know, you never know how they're gonna be that day. Keep your excursions simple, keep your port day simple and they will be far more enjoyable. Bring your stroller with you on port days. There's gonna be a lot of walking when you disembark and embark the ship. And depending on where you go, just being able to contain your little one, plus it, it doubles up as storage for all of your bags. Now we had a day at Coco Cay, which is like Royal Caribbean's private island. And there apparently are strollers that you can get. There are beach strollers that are available, but they're first come first serve. We tried to get one of those. We didn't bring a stroller that day and poor Matt. <laughs> spent like 45 minutes searching around the entire island to find a stroller. Just bring your own stroller on every single port day. You will not regret it. Car seats, okay. So we brought a car seat with us. So we purchased a couple coach bus rides, one from our hotel to the port and another one on the last day we did an excursion that was that included a coach transfer to go to the Kennedy Space Center. We weren't allowed to use our car seat. We had to put it under the bus. So we didn't use our car seat there. And on the islands, they had little shuttle buses and they had open vehicles. And again, there was nowhere to really strap in or use our car seat. Now, if you're a safety nut like me, this is not my jam. This is not what I like. I, I like car seats, car seats are safe. The one thing I would do is wait and spend more time to make sure that you have the safest vehicle possible to transport you to on these excursions because they were definitely the open doored <laughs> cars available at port that they were trying to usher us onto with our little one. And I was like, no. No, I need doors, I need seat belts. We'll wait for the air conditioned vehicle. Like if we had planned a larger excursion day and we wanted to rent a vehicle and drive around the island, then yeah, I would see definitely bring a car seat because then you could just strap it into your own rental vehicle and that would obviously be the safest option, but we, we flew with it. It basically, this car seat ended up just being diaper storage for our flight. Health and safety, let's move on to that. Now I'm pretty sure most cruise ships will have a medical center or some sort of like first aid center where they'll have all your big basic things. But I always like to bring my own first aid kit with me just for like those scratches and scrapes and you know, little things that will inevitably happen. Another thing that we made sure to have was Tylenol and a thermometer. You're gonna be around a lot of people and there's a high chance that your kid might end up getting sick, especially toward the end of the trip. Unfortunately, we did end up using our Tylenol because Elliot tripped and smashed his front tooth on the like lip entrance to the balcony, the porthole area. Anyways, his mouth was really hurting him and so we gave him Tylenol and we had to give him extra cuddles. And this is again where we're glad we had a nice stateroom because we ended up spending a few hours just watching some shows and just kids have accidents, they trip on things and just come prepared. Other things that we had were like sunscreen, aloe, stuffed animals for comfort, proper sun protection. All these things are just gonna make your trip a lot more enjoyable. And overall, cruising with a toddler is a really enjoyable, easy way to vacation with young kids. So I would highly recommend going on a cruise with your toddler. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you wanted to see what I packed on our week long cruise, make sure you watch that video right there. As well as if you just wanna see what it was like on the world's largest cruise ship, check out that video right there. Bye.